Hello everyone, Ogre27 Kane here today and we're going to do a review of Ender Lilies for the Nintendo Switch. Now I have to give a spoiler warning, in this video I show a lot of the bosses in this game as I reco recorded my progress as I played through the whole game. There were a lot of people that recommended this and this review is pretty sought after. So let's get into an overview and find out what this game's about. This game is a Metroidvania with a very deep and dark, mysterious kind of story to it. It has really good gameplay and the combat is an absolute blast. There are a lot of really good elements that make this one of the top Metroidvanias that I've ever played. I truly enjoyed this game and I hope you enjoyed this review. It took a while to build, but I believe it was worth it, so let's start with the gameplay. Now as you can see here, it has a very large world and everything is interconnected. All of the areas you go to require certain abilities to get to, and the game unfolds in a way that doesn't seem very linear. I absolutely love this. So you have some spirits that you can use as combat abilities, and then you have relics that are essentially your passive abilities. The spirits can be enhanced through different blight that you gain experience essentially in the world and this experience allows you to upgrade the abilities you want to use. Now you don't necessarily have to use everything that the game tells you to use and you can try different combinations and that makes for really fun and unique gameplay. Not only that, it allows you for traversal through combat abilities too which is pretty interesting and almost unique in this kind of style of gameplay. Now I most definitely had my favorite spirits that I used through the entire game but that doesn't mean I did it in the right or the wrong way. This game certainly influences your abilities, but it doesn't make you choose them. One of the coolest things too is when you're in the water, there are aquatic abilities and there are land abilities, and they may not always mesh, so you may have to find a new strategy just for that area. It was pretty fun, honestly, and I liked a lot of the underwater abilities too. The only other thing I want to say about gameplay is yes, the formula is tried and true, but these guys perfected it. So let's talk about the story now. So the story has a pretty unique and dark setting. You're a white priestess who's essentially trying to purify the land of blight. But you don't really get a lot of information and most of the information you figure out is through little tidbits from defeating said bosses and getting through areas. It makes it so you really do actually care about beating almost every boss in this game just to get their story elements. I really enjoyed some of the characters in this game and it made me feel emotionally attached when I defeated some of them ironically enough. One of my favorite characters in this game aside from of course the main character is a boss that you fight and I feature him very strongly later in this video. It was by far my favorite fight in this entire game. At first I really didn't understand much but by the end you understand a lot and you feel the pain of the land that you're trying to purify. You feel the awareness of the people that are suffering. It's pretty unique. It's definitely Lovecraftian in its nature, but it almost makes you feel the emotion as the world is dying itself around you. This is definitely a story you have to experience, and I can't spoil any more, so let's do graphics and animations now. Well first, let's talk about the graphics, and I love the graphics in this game. The art style is pretty amazing, and although at first it seems kind of stilted and almost plain, you start really paying attention when the bosses start moving around. The animations are absolutely flawless with every boss fight, and the hit detection is spot on. The graphics not only look absolutely crystal clear and clean, but on the Switch they function perfectly. I didn't really have any frame rate drops or issues or anything like that. My resolution was always very steady, no dynamic resolution issues, nothing of the sort. It has a fantastic graphical presentation. And just the same goes for the animations as you can tell here too. All of the enemies have tons of different frames of animations and good movement skills. There's also stunning abilities in this game too that allow you to drop a lot of enemies to their knees which allows for even more combat maneuvers and even more frames of animation. This really highlights a lot of really cool aspects of what these developers were able to accomplish. I know that this game is considered an indie title but I almost consider this a top-notch AAA title. This game is so well put together and so polished, I have nothing but praise for it. So I think we should get on to the next and my favorite category now, The Combat. 
Now this fight that I'm about to feature on the video here was my favorite boss fight in the entire game and I think epitomizes the combat of this game. How fast paced, how varied, how frenetic, how absolutely perfect the combat is in this. This enemy right here was not only fun, but his story was amazing on top of that. This was definitely the best fight in the game for me, and it highlighted everything that I love about Metroidvania style combat. And yes, there is a relic that influences your movement and dash speed and actually increases them, but I didn't really even need it because this game functions so well in the combat aspect. When I did equip them, I almost felt godlike because of the responsiveness of the controls. Now the only other thing I want to mention about combat is how the outcome and usage of the spirits work. And some of the spirits in this game completely changed that. One of my favorites was the wolf companion. I would just set the wolf loose and let it do all kinds of damage around me as I would fight. And a lot of times this would pick me up in that moment when I was getting hurt or was about to stagger an enemy and really needed the assistance. The only criticism I have is that I was not a huge fan of the limited usage of some of the spirits. Other than that, it was great. So let's hit controls and audio now. Now, as I've already kind of stated a few times, the controls in this game are extremely responsive and they're very, very well polished. The developer of this game spent a lot of time, and rightfully so. I know it paid off a lot for the developers of Hollow Knight too. So, it's kind of a lesson to be learned for anybody developing an action platformer or Metroidvania is how good the combat and the controls need to be to really make your game shine. Well lastly now, let's talk about the audio, and I know I haven't said enough. The audio in this game is amazing, it's fantastic. It's beautiful, and it has tons of variation and tons of tonal difference. If there's any good soundtrack out there for a Met Metroidvania to compete with this, it's going to be something like Salt and Sanctuary. It really takes a lot to, to produce this kind of quality of music and this much variation, this much mood and atmosphere, this much emotion to it. And I can't give these guys enough praise. They did a fantastic job. Let's do the conclusion now, and the conclusion is that this game is definitely a 10 out of 10, a must play. I am super happy that my audience showed me this game, told me about this game, because I was not going to give it a fair shake. And because you guys gave me such good advice on this, I have enjoyed one of my favorite experiences on the Nintendo Switch. I can't thank my viewers enough, this, you guys definitely came through on this one. This game definitely goes in my top 5 Metroidvanias, and now I have to completely rethink my list. I also have a couple more good ones to experiment with too, so that list is going to be pretty interesting when I finally get to putting that one out. I do have another list upcoming though, so stay tuned for that. Well that concludes my review of Ender Lilies for Nintendo Switch. Well thank you for watching today's video, it was an absolute blast to make. I upload every Monday. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And have a great rest of your day. This is Ogre27Kane, signing out.